there are 12 deadly sins to crypto trading. The ones that will truly gut you and leave you to bleed. I saw this list, 10 crypto mistakes. It was good, but my list is different. Almost everyone do this expensive journey and I can help you avoid it if you just stay with me to the end. Here it comes, CTO Larsons, 12 deadly sins of crypto trading. Number one, FOMO buying the end of the pump. Guys, when your Uber driver is talking about the coin, when it's all over social media, when everyone is showing their 10x, 100x, 1000x gain, that's not a buy signal. That's when the pros lock in their profit by selling to you. You need to get in at the beginning of the trend. Has this happened to you? Probably yes. It has happened to everyone at some point. But why did it happen? Let's continue. Sin number two, trusting anonymous cats on social media. Hey, this great coin at one cent is gonna go to $1,000 at the end of the year. You should buy it. They are good guys, but they are rare and far in between. Most of these people are pumping their own bags and they will keep pumping it while they sell themselves at the top. There are famous examples like Litecoin founder Charlie Lee wearing his Hoddle t-shirt while selling all his Litecoin at the top in 2017. And all the meme coins right now with absolutely no use case or even a team. Then it's a game of musical chairs and some of the players know when the music will stop, while you probably don't. A cat that you found on Twitter isn't your friend. The best buys that I've ever made, no one on social media was talking about at the time, or it was like one person that was my actual human friend. You got to get out of the mindset that there is someone on social media who is going to tell you what to do. You have to educate yourself, guys. Think for yourself. Crypto trading deadly sin number three, trusting the social media engagement pros. But what about the big finance accounts with millions of followers? Surely they are credible. Sure, yes, but they also give people what they want. Because that is what engages, what gets the likes, the views, the shares. That's how social media works. Your post has to get engagement or the post will not be shown to anyone. And what is engaging? Let me first tell you what doesn't engage on social media. At the top, people are ecstatic. It's going to go up forever. The last thing they want to hear is that this could be the top. And at the bottom, people are depressed. They've just sold. The last thing they want to hear is that this could be the bottom. When I posted large online gold flips for Ethereum at $175, that tweet got like three likes. No one wants to hear it's a buy at the bottom. No one wants to hear it's a sell at the top. At the top, people want to hear that it will go forever. So that's what the social media pros will give them. While actually the right action would be to sell. A very unpopular message. And at the bottom, people are depressed and they just sold everything at the bottom. They don't want to hear it's a great buy. They want to hear that it's going to continue down. They want to hear they've made the right decision. So that's what they will get from the engagement pros. Nothing engages so badly on social media as the right decision in investment. So the people who are professional social media influencers rather than investors are going to give people what they want. And it's the wrong action. And it gets worse from here. Crypto trading daily sins number four. Holding on to your losers, riding the trend down. So say you got the FOMO ETS and you bought the top of the pump. Then it turns the wrong way. What to do? The right action is to cut the losers quickly. Take the loss. Try again to get in later. Don't ride the trend down. We're here to buy low and sell high, not the other way around. Most beginners don't do this. They ride the trend down, hoping that it will recover. And then... Then what happens? After riding it all the way down, finally, beginner sell right at support, right at the bottom. Crypto trading deadly sins number six. People give up right at the bottom. Most of my Twitter followers I got already in the 2017-2018 run. 
Then during the rest of 2018 and 2019, a huge share of those accounts disappeared, never to resurface again, while actually that was the time to buy. So to recap, beginners, bought the end of the pump because they listened to anonymous cats on social media and social media influencer engagement pros. Then they held on to the losers, riding them all the way down to the bottom, where they sold at support and gave up. So most people gave up right at the bottom. And then what happens? Well, now after Ethereum has gone up 2000%, 20x, now they're coming back and might repeat the exact same thing again. Don't do that. Crypto trading daily sins number seven. Selling the winners too early. But what about that Dogecoin call from that dog on TikTok? The one that actually worked out, despite what I said earlier. And some dude got in Dogecoin at 0.1 cent a year ago. Today it's 50 cents, that's up 500x. $2,000 worth of Dogecoin then is worth $1 million now. You just need to be lucky like that once. So all those dudes are swimming in their penthouse pools and drinking piña coladas in their paradise villas right now, right? No, because what did most of them do? They sold the winners too early. You're supposed to cut your losers quickly and hold on to the winners, riding the trend up. I'm joking around a little bit here, making this sound obvious and easy. But if you've been in this game for a while, you know all this is easier said than done. That is the whole reason I developed my process, my large online indicator and all that stuff. I needed it myself and it's the best thing I've ever done, at least financially. If you don't like my indicator and process, find someone else's, but you absolutely need a plan and you need to stick to it. My process is the best one for me. If I had found a better process for me, I would be using that one instead. It's not for everyone, but welcome to check it out if you like on ctolarsson.com. I'm always interested to getting to know new people in my close network where we can share a common framework and a common tool set. Now let's continue. Crypto trading daily sins number eight, not using position sizing. Did you buy the dip? Did you buy the dip? You did not buy the dip? I bought the dip. Of course I bought the dip. Anyway, Welcome. Let's tell all these people to have fun staying poor. Everyone say buy the dip. Did you buy the dip? Ba? But how to buy the dip? First, you can't panic when it dips. If your position is too big, you're going to freak out when it dips. And you might end up selling the dip instead at the worst possible short term moment. So limit your position size. That's how to get a strong hand. Number two, you can't be 100% invested because then you have nothing to buy the dip with when the opportunity comes. In the 2017 bull run, there were six dips of 30%. Number three, this is the most difficult one. Don't buy the dip in a downtrend. Most things won't work out, guys. Almost all tech startup companies fail. Almost all coin projects will fail too. And even the good projects that eventually make it can go down 99% first. If you were here from 2018 to 2020, you've seen it. Don't average down in downtrend. All this together is harder than it seems at first. And the only way to survive is to use position sizing. That means that you limit the size of each trade, the size of the risk that you take so that you can fail a great many times and still stay in the game. But what about leverage? Can't I just 100 exit? No. If you are not super experienced, leverage is primarily a tool to reduce counterparty risk, not to increase profit. Number nine, getting hacked due to poor security. Experienced security experts are getting hacked. If they can get hacked, you can get hacked. I'll make a separate video on security. Make sure to be subscribed for that. But I will say two things right now. A custodial service like an ETP or ETF, like CME futures, like price tracking certificates on your bank, like an exchange, Coinbase, Binance, BTCX, they do have their own risks. There is a counterparty risk. The exchange can get hacked, the company could go bankrupt, etc. But for many people, the risk of that happening is less than the risk of them getting hacked with a wallet recovery seed saved in notes on their computer or written on a post-it by their desk. So either take the effort to learn to do it right or 
don't do it at all. Then use a custodial service. Don't do something in between. Don't do it yourself with a half as security. Don't do like a Jambelina who got hacked during his own live stream because he had written all his passwords in an Evernote with a portfolio of millions of dollars. If you're going to hold your own Bitcoin, use a hardware wallet, write the recovery phrases down on paper and store it somewhere safe like in a bank vault. Otherwise, don't do it at all. Price tracking certificates are not very cypherpunk, but a pretty good solution for most people. Even I hold Bitcoin and Ethereum price tracking certificates in ISK through my bank. Crypto trading mortal sins number 10, screwing up the handling. Apart from getting hacked, there are many more ways to lose your money. You can lose access to your crypto yourself. And you can't call the Bitcoin CEO if you lose the password, it's gone. Or you could send crypto on the wrong chain, send the ERC20 tokens on the Binance Smart Chain or vice versa. USD takes this on many chains. Don't screw up in the handling. Always transfer a small amount first. Number 11. Getting scammed. It's not only the giveaway scams, there are many more types. Within seconds of me posting this video on YouTube, there will be scammers posting comments. First one bot will post, ah, great video, but investing is hard, personally I learned a lot from Amy Schwetterbringer or something. Then someone else will post, ah, good, do you have her phone number? And then the bot will post, ah, sure, here it is. And then there will be 50 replies under that saying, ah, yeah, me too, I also used it, it was so great. So it's very elaborate scammers. Then there will be impersonators, CTO Larson with one S, CTU Larson, and 100 more. There will be people calling you with investment opportunities. God knows how they get the phone numbers. There will be projects that you invest in, which rug pulls, meaning that they exit scam all at once while you sleep. Don't fall for it. Don't send money to someone without knowing beyond doubt what you are doing. Let's continue. Crypto trading mortal sins number 12. Going to jail for tax evasion. Failing to declare the correct tax in many countries is very severe. Much more severe than you might think. And in some countries, the burden of proof is on you. In all other crime, you're innocent until proven guilty, right? But for example, in my country, reverse burden of proof applies. That means you're guilty unless you can prove that you are innocent. And while many violent crimes here in Sweden ends with a please don't do it again, most people convicted to a severe tax crime actually do go to jail. And it doesn't have to be about millions either. The highest threshold when it comes to severe crimes is about $50,000 in my country. $50,000. I joined the Swedish crypto Facebook group for fun the other day. There I saw people asking about tax advice and to my horror I see that other members are answering. Answers that I know are wrong. Answer which, if followed, could land those other people in jail. Don't do this, guys. Don't take tax advice from random people. Get an actual licensed tax advisor in your jurisdictions. And also don't get surgery from someone you found on the street. And if you're not Mr. White, don't call Saul Goodman. That's a movie. They couldn't get Al Capone for his mafia, but they jailed him for not paying tax. And do this ahead of time. If you don't plan for it, you can easily end up with more tax debt than you have money left. Pay your taxes and live a free man or woman. If you haven't died from any of the 12 deadly sins of crypto trading, congratulations! You've earned the right to like, comment, subscribe, bell and watch the next video. Thank you, tax. See you all, Larsen out. Hey,